Hello, welcome to another video on our channel. Here, we translate testimonies from people who have had near-death experiences. Today, we will get to know Charlotte's story. She says she died and played with her daughter in heaven. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so now. Activate the notification bell to be alerted to every new video. Now, let's listen to Charlotte's testimony. Hello, I am a regular listener to your channel, and as I listen to all the other stories you have shared, I feel the desire to share my experience with you and your followers. Sometimes it might seem a bit monotonous, but it's not my intention, so I kindly apologize if it seems that way. In 2003, I was enjoying a life that many could only dream of. I had a charming wife and an adorable daughter. I was a dedicated worker, rapidly advancing within my company, taking on a management role in my second year and progressing through corporate training to become a junior vice president. As I said, it was a life anyone would envy. However, in 2008, tragedy struck, and I lost my job at Lehman Brothers. No, I wasn't one of those responsible for the housing market collapse, but it was still a tragedy. Like many who had overextended themselves financially, I found myself in default, and eventually, my house was repossessed by the bank. After losing our home and job, I fell into a deep state of depression. My wife and daughter were the pillars supporting me. From a million-dollar villa, we ended up living in my parents' guest house, with my wife and daughter by my side. From a six-figure annual salary, I dropped to a modest income of $40,000 a year. Life, I thought at the time, couldn't get any worse. What a mistake. On the way back after picking up our daughter, my wife lost control of the vehicle she was driving, causing an accident against the highway wall. The police officer and the medical examiner confirmed that my wife and daughter died almost instantly. Yes, 2008 was the darkest year of my existence. I began to crumble, seeking any substance that could alleviate the pain, longing for an escape from the madness of this world. No one seemed to know how to save me from this downward spiral except my wife and daughter, and without them, I found myself sinking further and further. As I developed a resistance to one substance, I started mixing different ones, creating more potent blends. The choice was mine, and I made it. In 2010, while I was in another stupor, something unexpected happened. I felt a sharp but dull pain under my right jaw and my arm began to numb. Since my wife and daughter had died, I had wished for death and imagined that the time had come. Finally, I would have a chance to see them again. I sat in a reclining chair, passively awaiting the arrival of my death. I'm not sure what happened next, I remember closing my eyes, and then there was nothing. No tunnel, no welcome party, absolutely nothing. I felt like I had been deceived about the afterlife. Not that I was religious, but I wasn't an atheist either. I always thought of myself as a decent person. Yet there I was, trapped in this dark and endless void. Well, I guess this is what it's like when you're dead, I said aloud. I began to wander in this infinite void, wondering what was happening. I wasn't even aware of how much time had passed when I saw what appeared to be a tiny speck of light. I approached it, noticing that it never grew any closer. It felt like I had been trapped in this solitary limbo for centuries. In the end, I accepted my fate that there was nothing waiting for me on the other side. I silently cried for my wife and daughter, expressing how much I loved them and how much I missed them. I knew my fate was sealed. That's when I heard a voice. You, who defiled your own body, why do you think you deserve to leave this place? I timidly asked, who's there? He simply repeated his first question over and over. I don't deserve to leave, I said weakly. Yes, I brought this suffering upon myself. However, I had no idea who or what that voice was. It didn't seem evil or joyful. 
It seemed more bored by my presence. His words, when he spoke again, sent shivers down my spine, even though I didn't have a body or bones. Are you ready to be judged? The voice asked in the darkness. Yes, let's get on with it. Stop wasting time, I replied, with many more blasphemous expressions in my mind. Very well, you will be judged based on what you have done and not done in your life, he said. The point of light immediately illuminated the area, and there I was, watching myself in high definition. I watched from the moment I was born until the day I died. The first time I stole, when I was seven, was a five-cent bazooka Joe gum from the 7-Eleven store. I saw where I lied and deceived my friends, taking money they had earned doing various jobs, saying that homeowners paid less than we expected. I witnessed when I stabbed a colleague in the back on an important job where he had done most of the work so that I could take credit instead. The same colleague, after being fired, went home and took his own life. Finally, I saw the event that truly tore at my soul. While I was away for work, I cheated on my wife. The worst part was that she had known for a long time. I lied, stole, and committed virtually every sin known to man. I knew I wasn't worthy. The life review took a brief pause, and then I saw my wife and my little daughter appear on the screen. Please, stop, I said. The life review stopped on the screen where my wife had just given birth. Because of work, I had missed that too. The life review continued, showing how I was always too busy to play with my daughter or take my wife out for dinner. It finally stopped on me, sitting in that chair, motionless. Nothing. What do you have to say? The voice asked. There's nothing to say, I'm a horrible person. I thought all along I was a good person, but in the end, I wasn't. I was more focused on my work than on my family. I deserve whatever fate awaits me. God, forgive me. Woman, forgive me, I didn't mean to hurt you. Jade, dad is sorry he was never there for you. I continued to sink into despair, knowing I was probably headed to hell when the time for final judgment came. My father heard your pleas, the entity said. Wait, what do you mean by my father? I said as the darkness began to transform into light. There, in front of me, was who I can only assume was Jesus. My father has given you one last chance to become the person he raised you to be. I remember falling to my knees and kissing his feet. Rise. There are people here to see you, he instructed me. When I stood up, I saw Jade first. All the emotions I had held back burst forth like a broken dam. All I could do was mumble how sorry I was, how I had always been too busy with work to play with her. It's okay, Dad, you're here now. We played for hours, like any parent should. I ran with my little daughter. It was something I wished would never end. Then I saw Donna in the distance. I thought about how much I wanted to be by her side, and so it was. I hugged her and told her how sorry I was. It's time to go, Jacob, Jesus said. Please, no. I want to stay. I can't do it without them, I cried. Jesus put his arm around me, and I immediately felt a calm and love that no amount of words can describe. Then he said, you don't have to do it without them, I'm always here with you, as he touched my chest, and I felt what can only be described as an electric sensation around that area. I looked up in time to see Jade wave goodbye and silently say the words, goodbye, dad. I woke up to find several healthcare workers frantically working on me. He's back, doctor. I heard one of the nurses shout. Then came the routine questions, do you know what day it is? Do you know where you are? Do you know who the President of the United States is? Over the next few days, I found out that my mother was the one who found me. I learned that one of my heart's two main arteries was completely blocked, 
and the other was blocked 40%. Lack of oxygen to the brain had caused some issues, but nothing that didn't resolve over time. I won't say that life immediately got better after my experience. What I will say is that after many months of struggle, I overcame my habits and began rebuilding my life. I became a member of my local church and was baptized after accepting Jesus as my savior. Through this church and my faith, I'm happy to say I've remained free from relapses for almost 10 years. One last word of advice from me, if you have children, play with them, tell them you love them. Believe me, work can wait an hour or 10. Don't be like me. The loss I feel every day will never go away, but I know Donna and Jade are waiting for me. As much as I wish to stay, God gave me a second chance, a chance he didn't have to give. Thank you, and may God bless you and your listeners. And what do you think of this incredible story? Leave your opinions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's bring more people hope that there is life beyond what the eyes can see.